Hey guys, welcome to Textuality. This is our Textual Tuesday. This is our tech talk where we talk about certain things while we're just kind of kicking back, eating, relaxing. So let's get textual. Sometimes it'll seem easier. Don't be afraid. I'll be the one to guide you. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it out first. Um, all right. So, um, the Intel Core i7 Skylake CPUs, you know, everybody like, oh, crap, oh, those are cool. Yep, they just released, they're awesome, they're quad core i7 CPUs with uh, 4 uh, gigahertz uh, clock speed using a new um, socket called the <laughs> LJ1150. You see this, people? <laughs> this is why we don't have nice things. <laughs> Alright, but uh, to code to it, uh, again, uh, like I said, 4 gigahertz <laughs> clock speed using an LJ, uh, A, L, what, dude? Dab, not rub. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good life lesson there, boys. Um, using the LG 11, uh, 51, uh, socket. Um, it's a 950 watt, uh, processor. Definitely don't buy, uh, uh I don't know, like an 800 watt. PCU because you got a brand new process and it's only gonna take up a hundred watts most of the time your motherboards are even less than that or only like 150 I don't know I'm not totally sure on these new motherboards I think I think they're like 185 for the new motherboards so it's not really gonna take up that much so don't go buying yourself a thousand watt power supply yeah you know, it's not really needed uh, they're they're awesome for visual rendering. Um, they are automatically supported to DDR3 and DDR4. So that's another cool little boost. Um, these is the new Intel Turbo Boost technology, which is some pretty sick stuff to go and play around with. It is a, they are most of them are unlocked processors, and it's compatible with the Intel 100 series chipset. Which right now there's only one 100 series chipset uh, board out there and that is the uh, Z170 which I will be talking about later but now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Chase what he thinks about this uh, this new Intel uh, 6700k processor yep <laughs> I need like if you <laughs> no I know okay basically um, uh, it, it, it I, yeah <laughs> That's all I really have to say about that. Uh, really, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. I did not listen to him. <laughs> I'm talking about hardware here. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take the, the spotlight here, the, okay, anyway, um, my topic's in a different direction, uh, one of my topics are anyway. You guys all know and are probably well aware of Netflix and Amazon and their domination over the whole uh, field. Well, Chicago had this brilliant idea to put a 9% streaming tax on all these services. So basically, the reason they did this was because their their companies would basically take... Um, like uh, family video and stuff like that. They're basically uh, losing they're, sales tax. They're getting rid of those little ma and pa video stores, like family video and crap like that. They used to sell big time videos and now they just don't, like sell, rent, whatever. They can because $8 for uh, uh, a month, for 12 months, is about 100 bucks. 100 bucks a year? Who the crap's gonna want to pay like five bucks a movie when I could watch um, Thousands. for a whole month uh, probably like a hundred videos? I don't know. Someone do the math on that. Basically, family video and stuff—they're going out of business. And Chicago used to get all these sales taxes off all of it. Well, they can't anymore because everyone's switching over to Netflix and Amazon streaming services. So they thought, oh, I'll put a nine percent streaming tax on it. I'll be all right. Well, what they didn't realize is there was actually a law put um, in, in 1989 that 
restricts um, these internet taxes. So uh, government uh, government can't put a tax on like emails and any sort of uh, broadband usage. They can't put a tax on that stuff. So they put the tax on it thinking, oh, that'll be fine. When really they got sued for the 9% sales tax because they aren't using their actual, they aren't going by the laws. The reason they did that is they they were losing over twelve million dollars annually, which is a lot for Chicago's city to be losing. Yep. So suck it, Chicago. <laughs> but yeah. Win. So there's actually a whole Chicago tax complaint. You can go on. You can go on this website. We're not going to talk anymore about this, but you can go on the website. It'll be linked down below. You can read about it. See all the cool stuff. Um, just just some random news, I guess. So back to Josh for his next one. Um. Okay. Um. All right. My next hardware item, boys and girls and women and dudes. Um. Corsair. Uh. Decided to be kind of dumb, maybe a little smart. You know, you never know. And they decided to uh, team up with MSI and make a sick graphics card together. Basically, it is a 980 Ti uh, uh, jointed with water and reference uh, fan cooling. Uh, so basically, you got a water block on the main core, but all the other chipsets like the uh, RAM and stuff is all air cooled, air cooled, basically, and it circulates through the whole car, like, like. Imagine this is a card. My little Samsung Note 3 here. Imagine this is a graphics card. The fans, my little light thing here, this circulates through the whole card when the, the water block is right here. It's, it, yeah, yeah, it's, it's right here. And, um, you know, I mean, it just passively cools the whole card. It's pretty awesome. It's a neat little new concept they made up together. Um, Maybe it'll go somewhere. Maybe it won't. Maybe you'll be a dumb crap and take a selfie and throw it up there somewhere. Yeah. Um, Chase, uh, any opinion on this beautiful card made by these two big boy companies? I think it makes sense to air in liquid cool. I mean, you are basically still air cooling, but the liquid keeps a more constant temperature. The nice thing about it is, is you can probably keep the temperatures of all your stuff down because you're using two different cooling sources instead of one for the whole card, so. I know. That is a different aspect. It probably is going to keep things more cooler because there's two different sources. That's not just, I mean, yeah, if you have two fans on a card, it's going to stay cooler than a card with one fan. Although if the card's smaller, then it was going to stay just as cool, depending on the hardware on the card. And the ambient temperature. Yeah, and the temperature of room is a big account. Like, hey, dude, if I lived in Alaska, my computer's going to keep freaking cool. All right? Don't Throw even bother with fans. Just no. set it outside. Just just set it outside and you'll be fine. But, um, yeah. So I think it's a pretty cool card. A cool new uh, twist on things for the hardware industry. Um, and then my brother Chase over here is going to hook us up with some robots. Alright, I know all you are probably like, you're sitting here watching this video or something, then you're going to hear a shout from your mother going, Sign! Vacuum! Well, I have a solution for you guys. And only for, for only $899, you can get yourself an iRobot Roomba 980 that will vacuum your room with a push of a button. Not on it, you don't have to get up anymore to hit start from your cellular communications device. Which is pretty sweet. And uh, right now they only have 21 reviews and they are at 5 stars, which is still pretty sweet. Uh, basically, it's like their old vacuums. You probably, your aunt or someone probably has one. Or you! You could be lucky enough to have one. There's these sitting here laughing at us because we're talking about one that you can press a button on your smartphone when yours does it automatically. Anyway, it's really just a big green clean button. But anyway, so... Um, it has upgrades to it compared to the last one, so it's got better sensors in it, um, gives you cleaner floors, 
it basically just navigates much better than the old ones. If you ever see the old ones where it's like, have you seen the cat video where it's just like, hit, look a little bit, hit, move a little bit, hit, until it finally gets around the corner? This one actually senses where the corner is. It's got the vision in it to sense a corner and actually be able to navigate properly. So it's a much better design. And for one small fee of $899 plus shipping and handling, probably, you can have your very own iRobot Roomba 980. So, go out and get yourself one. Yeah, I like how you said, for a, a, a really low price. See, he's trying to sell you guys this stuff. Like, he just put a sales pitch out there. <laughs> Gosh, people no affiliation or anything with our robot, by the way. Yeah, we hate him. What? No. <laughs> but, yeah, that was cool, I guess. You know, it's a robot. Uh, I think my robot's going to be cooler because this is the BB-8. All right, guys, if now, if you don't already know, uh, Disney bought out the last three uh, rights to make uh, the rights to make the last three uh, movies of Star Wars. So, seven, eight, and nine. And, and Seven, which is coming out this Christmas, so cool, dittos, um, going, yeah, this 20, whatever, um, yeah, and so it's going to be freaking awesome, um, but the cool thing is, is they, had, they decided to, like, recreate R2-D2 in a sense, and now it's a spherical-based robot, and it was kind of a new concept, um, and they wanted to make bigger versions to show up. Um, with this coming out in their new movie. So, they made a couple big versions of this cool, like, spherical robot. I mean, it has a head. The head is a actually not attached to the sphere. It's just one big ball that literally rotates. We're going to throw a uh, video link in the description. And then the head, well, the head also moves. It's also got a motor system on it, or a magnet-based system, um, depending on which one you look at. And... It's really interesting. It's a cool concept. But now, the big thing that I'm going to point at is they decided to make it a toy. For $150, you can buy yourself your own little BB-8, which you can control on your Android phone. Android. Only your Android phone. Or Droid, I guess. Anything that can use, like, the Google App Store percents. Um, you definitely cannot run it on a Apple phone. Not to my belief. Not yet, at least. Because... Who wants to run it on an Apple? Come on, be honest out there. Like, this is an Apple? This ain't even my computer. I'm just using it right now. Alright. He went through his other two and they are both dead. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, come on. Apple? Lame. I want to put big lame sticker right here. Alright, I'm sorry. They might do some cool stuff. They might do some beautiful things with aluminum. Alright, but no. Uh, not, I'm not a fan. I probably won't be a fan ever. But you control it on your Android phone for $150. You get this little robot. It, it's probably only as big as this hand, per se. And you just you, you can drive it around. It's got cool little like uh, voice command like things when it gets hit or run over by something. I don't know, whatever. Um, it's got a cool little IR blaster so you can project stuff to your phone. It's cool. It's pretty pretty dang awesome. So, uh, for $150, go get yourself one. I don't believe they are out for uh, the U.S. market right now. Uh, they will be very soon. But Chase, would you buy one? <laughs> Alright, speaking of robots, you've probably, if you are in any way interested in this video, you're in any way interested in robots, you've probably heard of this. It's called the Now Robot. It's spelled N-A-O. Um, Basically, the latest press releases have unveiled that they have a stronger robot with a more comprehensive operating system. They're using better gears for like the arms, the heads and stuff, so it's a little bit more durable. It's a little bit more aware of its surroundings, and it's now got four microphones on it for directional talking, so whenever you talk to it, it'll actually look to look at you while you're talking to it. Um, yeah, it, basically it's got better facial detection so it can actually detect your face and your reactions and stuff. Um, it's better obstacle detection. So if you've ever seen the video of uh, Unbox Therapy, we'll link it in the description. He basically had one of the newer versions of the Now Robots. And it held a Pop-Tart in its hand. was like, you can have it. And it drops it. And it walks right where it dropped it. And slips on it and falls backwards. Gets itself back up. 
slips back on it, falls backwards again, gets itself back up, and falls forward on it. So they've basically improved that so that doesn't happen anymore. Uh, it's a lot quieter. Uh, the soles that dampen noise and the friction of its footsteps, so it doesn't. It does, it's not like a big. While it's walking, it's a lot more of a normal thing, and it's got a more skillful grasping of objects, and that's due to its better sensors and it's better and it's got um, more uh, motor control and everything. So it's a pretty cool concept. Um, I don't see it useful at the moment, other than a novelty, and it's pretty sweet. So, yeah, would you buy one? No, because it's way too expensive. They don't even have a, a price on the new one yet, actually. <laughs> well, if it's anything <laughs> close to the last one. <laughs> Stuff that usually doesn't have prices on it usually means it's over a thousand. <laughs> yeah, and let's let's just add to this. I mean, anybody out there that has a good enough knowledge in programming, and I mean, you can really get one really easily, trust me. Um, and... A, uh, just a halfway decent knowledge of basic, simple machines. You can go build yourself one of those. Who gives a crap? I mean, come on. You spend, you put a lot of time into it, but you're gonna love what you get out of it. That's all I'm gonna say on that piece of crap. Well, what? Um. So, all right, now that's fun stuff. All right, we're getting into the cars. You know how I said I was gonna talk about the Z170 board? Well, I am, and I'm gonna talk about MSI's. Or no, I'm not. Gigabytes. Sorry, forgot who made the cool one. Um, they made a G1 gaming board. It's kind of like their new series for the one one seventy. Like they're gonna we're, like we're gonna go out with a bang on this board, guys. And basically, a G1 series specialized in onboard cooling. And one of their and their biggest accomplishment with these boards is they put water cooling blocks on all the primary chipsets. So that means it's pretty freaking awesome. Roman, I mean, come on. What uh if you don't I mean you're gonna go spend hundreds of dollars already on those blocks and then they're gonna look uh like it doesn't it doesn't match the color of the board. Well now this is all fluent coloring, uh, amazing cutout aluminum blocks. They just they just look beautiful. So I mean if you if you wanna water cool a board, you might wanna take a good look at the Z one seventies. By uh, Gigabyte, their G1 gaming boards, freaking beautiful pieces of art. They they allow for uh, four GPUs. I mean, what more can you ask for? And you can even have two of those little fancy uh, expan uh, like expansion cards for those uh, really expensive uh, Intel um, SD, SD SSD. Oh God, I fucked it up. SSDs. Um. <laughs> I was about to say Intel SD. Uh, uh, yeah, I know why I was saying it's SD, but their their new uh, SD. Um, oh gosh, seven hundred series. I think it's seven hundred series. Um, the freaking awesome. That I do know. Hey, so yeah. Uh, but that's what, that's that's what I got. I mean, should that be in the motherboard I buy for my system? Since we blew out the other one. Yeah, if you want to spend a couple hundred bucks. <laughs> That is the one thing about this board. It is, it is a little, it's a little pricey, but all new technology is. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like 400 bucks. And that's just off of my head right now. Don't hold me to it. I'm just debating it. I know they released lots of different kinds of boards. So, I was looking at it earlier, and I think that's what I saw. But Chase, Chase would probably put one in his system if he had the money. <laughs> Save him, man. <laughs> what do you got? All right, the Samsung Gear S2. I'm looking back to Unbox Therapy. He did a video, which I am not going to spoil what he does in it, but I'll tell you the specs of it, and I get, and I bet you can get an idea. So the Samsung Gear S2 is basically another smartwatch on the market from Samsung. So you know it's awesome because Samsung's the best around. For Ain't nothing gonna stop them now. For phone stuff, just stop. And, and washers. <coughs> and dishwashers. And a couple of TVs. <laughs> okay, anyway. So basically, they've upped the ante, I guess, in a way. Uh, it's got a 1.2 inch circular AMOLED screen. Its resolution is 360 by 360 pixels, but it's a circle, so you don't see, like, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, 
No, they did make three versions of this. They made the Gear S2, the Gear S2 Classic, and the Gear 3G. Um, I do believe the 3G one you can put an operating system on. Sorry, not an operating system. You can put a SIM card in and use it like a phone like the Gear Live did. Um, it's got 512 megabytes of uh, memory, so RAM. It's got a dual core 1 gigahertz Pega W, so it's the uh, newest... Uh, I don't know. It's the newest CPU for it. Why? Uh, dual core 1 gigahertz Pega W. Oh, a Pega? Yes. Oh, cool. Yeah. Those are cool little things. It's got 4 gigabytes of internal storage. Uh, now, the Gear S2 has a uh, 250 milliamp hour lion battery, which is estimated for 2 to 3 days. Uh, you can probably see about 1 to 2. Just same. Uh, all three of them have wireless charging. But the Gear S2 3G has 300 milliamp hour lion battery inside of it. They have all the sensors, the accelerometers, gyroscopes, heart rate, ambient light barometer. But the cool stuff that you guys probably want to hear about is it's water resistant. So if you want to go and throw it in like three feet under water, you're probably good. You can go swimming with it. Now, I don't know how much the screen's going to freak out, but you can go swimming with it. Yeah. It used to say on here the um, IP68 certified dust and water resistant. So it can withstand, I think it's four feet of water. I can't remember. It can withstand a lot more water than any of the other ones. And that's continuous, just submersion. Dust resistant, of course, because anywhere dust can get, water can get. All the cool stuff like that. Um, do you have any more topics? I think I'm out. All right. Unless you guys want to talk about chicken. So I'm going to leave you guys off with a question, and I would like you guys to leave the answer down in the description. Uh, you guys have seen this debate going on for a while. Uh, last week they asked, uh, this company asked which the, uh, people would rather go for. The Note 5 or the S6 Edge Plus. And right now um, I'm going to give you these total number of votes. So uh, 37% uh, preferred the Note 5. 42% preferred neither, so those are probably iPhone losers that no one cares about anyway. But a measly 16% on the S6 Edge. <sighs> Guys, that's not hope for the S6 Edge. Nope. 4% did say they want both, though, so those are the people that are just like, I just want a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the really the major difference between the two is, I think... Uh, I don't think they have a different screen size anymore, actually. The main dis difference is one has the curved edge, and then the other one's got the clicky pin now, and I want that clicky pin because you can just sit here and click it. Anyway, um, I think they do have a little bit different processor speeds and stuff. One's meant more for, like, gaming and not so much casual use, but the other one's meant for, like, note-taking and stuff like that. So it just depends on what you want. Um, like I said, leave down in the description which one you would prefer, and if you want, you can give a reason why. You must write it in a paragraph. No, I don't care. Anyway, just leave it down in the description. Tell me what you think about it. Um, which one would you pick? Uh, dude. No, all the way, man. Oh, God. Um, I... I dude, we could have a sword fight. We could have a sword fight. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I personally would prefer both. But if I had to go down to it, the note, because now you can take the uh, pen out and write on the screen, and whenever you put the pen in, it'll auto-save it. I use the note feature all the time, so that's just a time saver. Um, yeah, so that's what my preference is. Like, you guys should leave yours down in the description right below that like button, you know. Yeah. Um, share it so you can see what your friends think, and then you guys can have a little argument down in the description upon which one you guys mm -hmm. think's the cooler one, so... But, um, quick, before we bail out, um, I want to give a shout-out to the American Robot. Alright, uh, I need a flag right here. No, no, I want the whole thing to be a flag. The American Robot. Alright, well, basically, um, what the American Robot is, is, um, it's a couple guys, a couple idiots, pretty much, uh, got together, built themselves a big mecha robot to destroy crap with. And then... Before our robot was even finished, or even was painted, they decided to challenge the Korean robot, which is beautiful and 
spent so much money on that like like yeah like it, it i mean it's like whoa it, it's beautiful and they decided like hey yo one year in one year's time let's fight to a to a duel and let's see who wins you know so one year to get ready get all fancified up prepared for this battle this great american battle. it's it's a real life real steal if you just want a quick exclamation Pretty much. It is a legitimate, real life, real steal, They're just, and it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be sick. Everybody, stay tuned. <clears throat> it's gonna probably be happening here in about six to seven months, I believe. So, be prepared. Definitely be ready for that. It's gonna be an awesome live stream. All right. Anyway, I think that's all we have for today. So, if you guys like this show, please leave a like down below, comment, share, subscribe, do all that good stuff. And if you disliked it, well, I think you know what I'm gonna say. Play off the haterade.